Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehra Bagga and today I'll be playing the final blitz on Lee Chess and during the game I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before I start with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start with the game and see how it goes. Got the white pieces. I'll play the London system setup, which starts with d4. Bishop comes on f4. And then I think the dark square bishop first before closing its triangle by playing pawn forward. Um, I can develop the knight also, so that also works. Um, okay, I'll play pawn forward. Preparing to play knight e5 sometime soon. Uh, if an opponent is giving me a chance, why not develop first properly? So I'll go with uh, c3 first, so that my pyramid is solid there. Attacking my bishop with his knight. I'll just go back, defending the bishop. Don't want to ruin my pawn structure there. Uh, if I play knight over there, I will lose a pawn. So I don't want to do that. I'll just turn up my bishop maybe, eyeing this knight. And I can go with queen on c2 as well. That's a weak move, I would say, because you are just weakening up your king side already. Which makes me wonder why shouldn't I take this first? And after I do take, there comes my pawn army towards the opponent, Mo moving his knight also backwards. And then I can connect both my knights. Okay, this is also a nice move, I would say. Okay, now he's preparing to cast on the other side of the board, which means I should first pin off this knight as well. Okay, I'll play backwards because I don't I want him to play pawn forward, which he doesn't. <laughs> So I take on the bishop here, takes with the queen, which gives me a chance to get my knight on the active square finally. And now this controls this as well. I have a fork coming as well, which opens up my h file. Well, that's a nice move by the opponent, counter attacking my pawn. Hmm, we have something better. I spawn forward. If he does take, then it's a worse for him. But if he doesn't, then it doesn't work too. Uh, this won't work because I guess get to take it, but he takes this pawn and then another, which I don't want to happen. So I'll just play pawn, uh, queen here, defending the pawn. And I have this move uh, next coming, uh, a4 attacking the queen uh, can take the knight or just actually i should not take the knight i'll go here attacking his rook so that at least he doesn't castle this side now so i'm sure where he's going to castle so i can attack in a better way pawn four would be really nice though and his knight is actually kind of troubled over there Start with pawn forward, asking questions to the queen, which goes back. Only square is this, where the queen would be safer. Yes, I'll get my rook here. The idea is to play pawn forward next. He cannot take because I take with the rook otherwise. Now open castles finally. Uh, that folk can work someday once I move this knight. So I'm just trying to do that straight away. Yes, this knight can come here. And then I take. And then I kick this knight away somehow. And fall him for a folk. Okay, that's take. This pawn forward would mean that his knight has to move now. Or maybe after he does take. But it has to move sometime or the other. Moves right away, which comes with a fork. Oh, is that a mate? 
Ah, it's not a smothered mate. I thought for a second it's a smothered mate, but yeah, he can come his, with his king here. Oh, how about I take the pawn? Now let's not be greedy. I'll give a check first. Get his king out. Take on the rook. He takes back. I'll take another pawn. Which he does take next. I can double up here. But he gets a pawn there then. Mm. Should I be castling? Not really. Rook lift. Doesn't work. I will do this rook lift maybe. This is safe. Preparing to castle, maybe king up, maybe king up on d2. Ah, and pasa happening. I'll take, he can take yes. I'll play pawn forward. He cannot move his rook. Otherwise, he'll be losing another pawn there. Oh, and that's attacking me diagonally. How do I stop it? One as simple as uh, get my rook here. Or I just castle. No, nah, let's not castle. Looks too dangerous for now. If his queen comes here, I'll offer him queen exchange. Because I'll be attacking his pawn too. Time is one trouble factor. Now this definitely works. Couple of pawns under attack. Oh, this one was more. Uh, pawn forward. Maybe he also plays forward. Now I play one forward so that this queen's diagonal is blocked. And then I can take this pawn if he moves forward. Oh, takes with the rook. That was interesting. I'll take two. What was he thinking? Why will I not take it? I'll take this too. Comes with a check. I go up. Simple. Oh, he takes the pawn there instead. Which means we are going down the memory lane. How do I checkmate him now? Okay, I'll take the pawn first maybe. Attacking his knight. If he tries to save the knight, well, then it was troubles for him. I'll go here. Ah, check and he gets, oh thankfully we didn't see, check, now I'm on the driver's seat. I don't have to leave the check, oh it's mate, oopsies, he could have won it from there because he had this brilliant move, queen to b2, that's, oh uh, no actually that didn't work, because I can take with the rook, did really he have something else, let's analyze from the game. Computer analysis always after every game so that you understand what could have been done better so that you improve next time. I started with d4, often played d5, bishop f4, pawn e6, knight f3, standard moves of the London, often plays knight c6, I go with e3, knight comes on e7 there and I played pawn c3, uh, the other knight comes on g6. Of computer suggesting you can let go of the bishop, which I generally don't prefer, so I bring it back. Now I'm open to asking bishop exchange, so I don't want that either. I develop the bishop on d3, attacking the knight. Open plays f5, as I said in the game as well, that's bad because you are just weakening up your king's side. Here I took on the bishop first, uh, so that if after the open does take, I can go on with my pawn attack on h5. So it comes h4, open plays h6. Either he should have played h5, but the problem with h5 is you are just weakening up the control on g5. Knight can come to g5 and then there will be some threats always around. Uh, so then I played h5, making sure that the knight is moved away and I'm in control of the situation. Then developing the other knight on d2. Open thoughts, things of like casting on the other side now because now this pawn structure is a bit weak as you see. Uh, I can some point of time exchange my knights as well, which is the only defender then of the king side. 
And yes, I can attack from there then. So I went with the other side as well. Uh, bishop on b5 tries to kick me away. I go back. And he doesn't exchange. Uh, he doesn't. He wanted to remove the pin straight away from the bishop. And I took on the bishop. Open does take back with the queen. I jump in with my knight correctly on e5. Queen comes up on b5. Uh, okay, what was the best move? Pawn b4. b4 attacks his knight. Um, but my problem was if he comes here, then I take and he takes and now i cannot take um okay i can get my queen here and then i can pressurize the spawn okay that was the thing which i didn't see coming of course uh so here my opponent played knight c6 which was bad as i said i first attacked the rook then went with uh, a4 the main idea was to just somehow move this knight away because once that happens and he was about to cancel as well i knew it I can take advantage of it. I played rook b1 first. Open does cancel, which is again bad. Casting on the wrong, wrong time when my when I'm attacking. Uh, if you see my rook and queen are just near where his king is on the opposite side, my knight is one folk away. <laughs> uh, and that's going to be bad news. Uh, not much late. I play pawn for b4. Finally, opponent tries to exchange knight, which, which does happen. And then I play pawn forward again, uh, asking his knight to move away, which does happen. He takes it backwards, and then I give a check, which means he's losing a rook straight away. That does happen. He goes exchange down. Uh, and here I took on the pawn first. He does take back with the queen because his queen was under attack. I can castle here, but I tried to just do the rook lift. Uh, my opponent played pawn forward, g5. I did the end percent. I can let it go, but I wanted to just take because even if after he does take, there's not much threats happening. Uh, then he attacks my queen. Uh, I, computer says I can do the rook lift, but I preferred the other way. Rook g1, open place pawn forward h5. And then I go with queen on e2. He can take my pawn, but I'm attacking a couple of pawns. Uh, here I advance the pawn further. My opponent takes on with the rook. I take back. Yes, I can. I was assuming that the check would come, but he first takes with the pawn, and then I take his pawn back with the queen. He takes my pawn with the queen, and I take on the pawn uh, on b7, the best moves in this right order. And then comes a check, and I go up. Uh, okay, so there was hardly anything, nine points above, and that was mate in four. And as I moved, he placed his king on the worst possible square from there. That was mate in one, and yes, checkmate, game over. So, don't expand your pawns like that, and don't open up from both the sides. Do not cast on the side which is being under attacked with queen and rook already. These two files were pretty much hard controlled by white, as you saw, uh, and the open castle on the, on the wrong side, and that's what he paid for eventually. I hope this was a good enough lesson to be taken away. And... I hope you liked the video. Do let me know feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.